might be happening. I'm assuming it's probably going to be virtual this year. We do not have an idea. Yeah, there's a transition in the position at the state level. So we're waiting for that person to be hired before we hear about that. Okay, so as soon as we know, we'll let everybody know. But as it says there, it's optional. You know, participation by subrecipients is a nice to have. But if it doesn't work for your schedule, no worries. Uh, technical assistance. We really just want to underscore there that if you need help, please don't wait. Please ask for it. You know, we're all here to try to help you succeed. So if you have questions, if you're not sure whether you're in compliance, if you need to make a change from your original plans, just reach out and we'll work with you to, to try to make your outcomes be successful. And then we're also looking to try to do some conference calls to build capacity, looking at subrecipients who might have similar strategies that they're working on. So that there's an opportunity to exchange some lessons learned and things like that. So that'll be coming along later. Uh, in section eight on evaluation, that's about results-based accountability. Similar to last year, there will be a conference on RBA for new recipients that will be virtual, not in person, unfortunately, this year because of COVID. Uh, we are continuing our work with Angie LeDuc and for new subrecipients or subrecipients where they've had a staff changeover, that RBA conference will be, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a mandatory conference uh, for experienced subrecipients who have developed a base in RBA last year or have uh, results-based accountability experience coming in. Uh, we do provide a consulting opportunity with Angie. So that'll be done on a, essentially we're not doing it as one size fits all. We're, we're customizing this to where people are with their RBA as we help them develop capacity. And then the final section there on other expectations for sharing messaging and training opportunities. This is really an opportunity for us to keep building our prevention network across the region. And so where there are things that come across our desks that we think need a broader dissemination, we will be reaching out and asking you to help spread the word on those things. So before we move on, I just want to ask, does anybody have any questions about what I just went over or anything that you've looked at in uh, part three of your awards? There will also be a good question and answer period at the end, just to let you all know. So I'm not hearing any questions and I don't see any raised hands, so I'm going to move on. So now the rest of your award. Part four is standard provisions. And those are stand standard provisions in any sub award that Mount of Scutney makes with federal funds. And one of the things that does is in section three there, it highlights key provisions related to federal funds. For those of you who might be familiar with the federal administrative requirements, they're quite thick. Um, they're, you know, they go on for hundreds of pages. So obviously we did not repeat all of that in your awards, but we highlighted some things we wanted to make sure that you're aware of. Um, one, that your expenditures must be allowable under the federal cost principles. Uh, if you have significant changes in budget and scope, you have to get prior approval from Melanie and Marianne before making those changes. So for instance, when COVID hit last year, almost all of our subrecipients had to make changes. And it, um, in some cases, you know, we found out through performance reports that people were changing what they were doing with the funds. And that really needs to be discussed ahead of time under the federal requirements. And then Mount of Scudney is going to be undergoing an A133 single audit. Uh, we, we, we are going to have an audit. It's possible that your subaward might get selected for review by the auditors. You know, when auditors do an audit, they, they do what's called sampling. So they'll say, oh, you have 10 subawards. We're going to pick two of them and go look at them. So there are provisions in your award that say that if, if our auditors come and ask and they want to look at your records, that you'll share those with our auditors. It's not something scary. It's just something to be aware of. We know we're going to get audited. They're going to probably audit this grant, and it's entirely possible that they'll audit one or more of you in that process. And that means they're just looking at your documentation, looking at your record keeping. So just make sure that everybody on your team that's involved with expending these funds knows that your files should be audit ready at all times. And so I really just want to underscore that any staff that's spending money under this grant really should understand what the provisions of the award require so that, you, you, that you're ready. And also just to make you aware that, for instance, with record keeping under the federal requirements, you have to keep the records for up to three years because there are audits that happen after the award ends. And then part five of your award is the state of Vermont flow through provisions. We streamlined this as much as we could. We only included the provisions that the state of Vermont requires us to include. Uh, but even though they are essentially boilerplate and those of us who get other grants and contracts from the state have seen them before, I do want to encourage everybody just to be familiar with what's in there because the state of Vermont considered them important enough to require us to flow them through to you. So just take a look and make sure that you understand what's required by those state of Vermont provisions.
And now there's another poll. So this one has to be, oops. I gotta switch it up. All right, this, uh, we're gonna move into our budget part. And so this has to do with budgets. We're looking pretty good here too. Um, we'll need, a, we have some people who are very, very confident with their budgets, some people who need a little bit of help and somebody who we're gonna shepherd along to making sure that they love their budgets, Jackie. Yeah, I love that um, somebody was honest enough to put, get me out of here. I love it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I Oops. can't see who did what, but um, whoever that person is, just know that I'm around if ever you need help. So um, I, the next um, slide is an invoice template and I'm actually going to, um, Marianne, if you can stop sharing. Okay, and I am now going to share my screen. Okay, can everybody see that? I think you're all muted, so nobody's answering me. Um, I'm going to assume that everyone can see it. So I can, I can, I can see, see it. it. Okay. Um, last year, we kind of told people to just make their own invoice and submit it. And um, what we received was a whole host of different forms, some in Excel, some in Word. Um, and um, it got a little bit confusing, I think, for everybody um, getting us the information that we needed. So this year we decided to come up with our own template. Um, I tried to make it as simple as possible for everyone to fill in. Um, but because we are asking you to use this template, um, we decided to have this webinar just to review how to fill it out. Um, it's very similar to the budget template that you did when you submitted your grant. So it, it shouldn't, and every team, everybody seemed to be able to get the, the hang of that. So, but we're just gonna review it. And so what I'm doing here is I have a dummy invoice um, that I'm going to manipulate and you guys can see what I'm doing um, as I'm doing it. So what I did was I already pre-filled in that Supposedly, this is a grant from for the collaborative, our address and our sub award number, which is in box one of your sub award. Like Alice said, we need that written on every invoice. Uh, in the first column, you just put in your budget as per your sub award. Um, and you have to put in the name of the people here if you can put in names or you can put in positions um, it doesn't really matter and then fill in your fringe whether you're using a percentage or if you're using um, actual costs for your percentage again based on what you did for your grant budget um, then we have each month is its own column so if we're saying that um, reporting for november which is the first month that you will be reporting for. You just start putting in your numbers. So I'm gonna put in 500, 250, 250. And then if this is a percentage, you can, I did not create a formula because I didn't know what people's percentages were going to be. But if you are using a percentage, you would do equal sum of the first three times 0.2. And I have to make that column a little bigger. And then this row here will automatically compute. Now, if you look over to the right, the total- Becky, Can I interrupt you with a question? Sure. Why did you choose 0.2? Um, I used 0.2 because it's kind of a average. About 0.15 covers um, FICA, FUDA, 
um, I should say, I should say Social Security, Medicare, state unemployment. I don't know if people pay federal unemployment or not, workman's comp. And then I don't know if you pay health insurance, um, what other benefits you give to your employees. So I kind of just chose point two as a so, figure, but you can figure that out. Your, your bookkeeper should know what your percentage is for your organization. Thank you. Um, if you look to the right, you'll see the total column um, is auto computed. So when I start filling in December, that number will change. Um, and then the remaining balance is basically your budget minus your total column. And that will also auto compute. I'm gonna take out December for now. Um, keep going down. I don't, I, let's just say I didn't have any consultants in November. Um, I had $100 in materials and supplies, no training, uh, no travel because we're not going anywhere due to COVID. Um, and I had $50 in other expenses, which need to be explained. Um, you can put them here, you can put it, um, I would say probably, I didn't really make a spot for that. So you can just put it over here. Um, again, this row will auto compute and it didn't. So I will fix that formula that should say to C20. I'm glad I threw that in there. So I saw that. Um, it, did, it did compute correctly over here. Jackie, uh -huh. Will has a question. Do you want to take it now or wait until the end of the spreadsheet? Um, it's fine now. Okay, ahead, thanks. Um, I was wondering with the uh, personnel, we budgeted according to different personnel working, but um, it would be kind of hard to invoice exactly how much went to each person. Is it okay to just invoice all the personnel together? It is okay, so just indicate that on the first line so that we know that's what you're doing. So we're okay. not thinking that it's all for one person. Um, but this is Alice, I need to jump in here. You need to look at that paragraph 4C in your award because some people are required to provide full documentation, including documentation of your payroll. That documentation needs to line up with what you're invoicing. That would, that would, it's just, um, it, the people doing the invoice are different than the people calculating the payroll. So we get like a total figure easily, but to break it down by employee is a little bit more tricky. Yeah. So that actually would be fine. If, if you are, it depends on, you know, but if you're somebody who's giving us the documentation of your payroll and you just roll it up to a personnel line item on the invoice, wouldn't that be fine, Jackie, as long as the total from the payroll documentation equals what's on the rolled up line item? I think that's fine. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I totally lost track of what Can I Can I just jump in on that question for Will? Um, I think it's easier if you make the correction on your template or that um, that there is just one budget line item. So for instance, if this is, I'm, I'm assuming you're gonna roll the cost up into one line item if you're gonna report that way, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sure. Sure, we can do that. Yep. Yeah, because we don't want to show an overspending in one person and underspending in others. Um, you'll want to roll the budget together as well. Cool. Thank you. Okay. The next line again is going to auto compute. It's a total of your personnel and your other expenses. Um, and then the next line, and then this is the line that gets people. Um, I put it in to auto compute that your indirect is 10% of your direct costs. I know not everybody asked for indirect, and I'm not sure if anybody asked for more than 10%. So if you're using 10%, this is going to auto compute. If you're not using 10%, you're going to need to change the formula to being the percent that you do use or if you didn't ask for indirect, you're gonna change that to a zero. Um, 
the the part that gets people when they're working on grants all the time and i will admit i made this mistake for many years until one of our um, state funders pointed it out to me direct indirect costs are not 10 percent of the total grant they are 10 percent of your direct expenses so on a ten thousand dollar grant you're not getting a thousand dollars in indirect you're getting nine hundred dollars in change um, if you ever need to figure out what your indirect costs are going to be when you're writing a grant let's say it's a ten thousand dollar grant you take ten thousand dollars and divide it by 1.1 and that will give you the total of your direct costs and then subtract that from your um, total grant and you get your indirect it took me years to figure that out so that's a pointer anybody has any questions about it let me know um, Can you say that again where you said it's not 10 percent of the total grant but 10 percent of it's 10 percent of your direct expenses so the total of your personnel which here is line 13 and line 21 all of your direct costs which are totaling line 23 if you can see here on 1350 dollars in expense it's 135 dollars if you've chosen 10 percent as your indirect rate thank you hey jackie this is alice i just wanted to highlight for people that you do need to calculate your indirects each month when you do your invoice we did have some subrecipients last time <clears throat> that were doing the indirects on a quarterly basis but invoicing on a monthly basis that doesn't really work there were other people that were trying to allocate their indirects at an equal amount across it needs to be calculated each month off of the actual expenditures direct expenditures for that month and uh, the same thing for personnel we did have people last year who were saying okay we allocated ten thousand dollars for personnel for the year we're going to divide that by 12 and um, expense it out each month. Um, just like Alice mentioned previously, you can't do it that way. It needs to be your actual payroll expenses if you actually paid the people that way. But, you know, we are expecting that you're paying based on the work that they did for the grant. Uh, sorry, this is Ashleen from Little Rivers Healthcare. I just have a quick question with indirect costs. That doesn't apply to everyone, correct? You said that? Right, if you didn't ask for indirect, then that number is going to be zero. Okay, cool, thank you. Just wanna make sure. Yep. Okay, we added a couple of things also at the bottom here. Um, as Alice said, different organizations are required to submit different documentation of their expenses. This little checkbox is just to remind you that you need to submit the documentation so um, it will get attached to the um, submission that you make through Smartsheet and just check the box that you have submitted it. Um, we also unfortunately ran into an issue last year um, where we were processing invoices and for some reason occasionally an invoice wasn't getting paid. And we had no way of doing that because we don't actually make the payments ourselves. It goes to the Mount of Scotty business office and who knows, somebody missed an email. It got buried on somebody's desk. Who knows, for some reason, um, people never got their payments and we didn't know it. Um, so we're just asking you to check every month whether you received your payment from the previous month and say either yes or no, because if you say you haven't received it, then we can go back to the business office at Mount of Scutney and say what happened to this. Um, we're trying to um, avoid human error, which is, you just never know what's gonna happen. And then again, um, the certification on the bottom of the report that um, everything is true and complete, signed by title and the date. And then um, you will be getting reminders every month through Smartsheet to upload this report. Um, and I will be reviewing them and then sending them on to Melanie for payment. 
Um, Alice, did I leave anything out? Um, Alice is my guru. <laughs> I just wanted to underscore that um, if you want to scroll down back to that part that people are signing. So this is required under the federal requirements. We have to have people sign this. And the person signing it is basically saying, we're not committing fraud. Everything we're saying here is true. So um, it needs to be somebody who's authorized to sign it. So last year, sometimes we would get ones that weren't signed. Sometimes we get them signed by people who weren't authorized to sign them. So just make sure that you've got somebody like if you have a CFO or a senior accountant, you know, a controller, somebody who's actually authorized to, to, to attest to the fact that these are um, the actual expenditures that your organization had. Hi there, I have a question um, about that. So is this um, e-signaturable or do we need to, um, we need to print it out, sign it, scan it, and then send it back to you? I think an e-signature is fine as long as the person who's doing the e-signature actually put it on there themselves and it's not some administrative person just saying, oh, I'll put Mike's signature on here, everything will be fine. Just because if something does come back, you know, the person is actually liable for having signed this. Right. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering about does smart sheets uh, work if it's, if you get a PDF of okay. this? Um, we'll get the smart sheet in just a minute. So oh, cool. that question. Rock on. Thank you. And yeah, I was going to say in, in these times when we're, a lot of us are working from home, we may not have the as good technology as we do in the office. So again, if there's any questions or problems with how to submit anything, um, we're here to help. Okay, any other questions? Okay, then I will stop sharing. Jackie, I just have a quick um, thing yep. I wanted to jump in. Sometimes if you can, um, uh, I think with Smartsheet, you will have an option of either uploading an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF, however you're sending it. Uh, keep in mind uh, the business office. And when I print it out on eight and a half and by we can't see the numbers if it's so small. Just try to keep that in mind. Um, Jackie, I don't know if you could show us how to maybe hide. Um, oh, yep. I was going to do that. I'm glad. Yeah. Because sometimes glad. last year we had a, a real hard time seeing some of the invoices. And as they get filled out, we can hide a few months at a time as they get old. Right. So if anybody doesn't know how to do it, okay, now it's, let's say I'm into uh, January. So I want to, I don't need to show the business office November and December's numbers. So I highlight row C and D. And now I have to move the, my, let's see, my mouse has disappeared. Um, Come back, mouse. Okay, um, move this out of the way. And then I go into format. And I click on hide and unhide, and I'm going to hide those two columns. So now the first column that shows is January. If I want to, I can also hide everything through September. And now all that Melanie and the business office are going to see is the month I'm reporting on, the total and the remaining balance. And nothing goes away. So, you know, the first time I saw something like this, I went, oh crap, I lost the rest of my spreadsheet. Um, but all you have to do to get it back is highlight B and E because those are the two ends of it and then go to unhide unhide columns and then E to N unhide columns. So if anybody, that's a little trick if, if anybody didn't know it. I don't know everybody's familiarity with Excel and I apologize if I'm talking down to anybody. Um, this is Alice. I just wanted to jump in. One of the things we did to streamline these sub awards is because you're getting paid after the fact, we're not making people do separate financial reporting because the invoice serves as a financial report as long as you don't hide the total and remaining balance columns because those essentially would be what are on the financial report. So when you're hiding columns, 
don't hide the current month and don't hide the, the total and the remaining balance because we need all three of those columns to count it as a financial report under the federal requirements. Thank you for uh, taking a few moments. If you are um, submitting uh, this in Excel, I can hide the columns on my end. So it's not a huge deal. It's just if you're providing this in a PDF that's super small, just keep that in mind. Okay, now I will stop sharing. Okay, um, Alice, are you taking over again? Sure, I could. <laughs> um, this slide just underscores, you know, this is federal funding. Uh, the costs are by reimbursement only because that's the model that the state uses. Uh, just, I think this is the third time we've said it, but invoices should reflect your actual costs, not your budget estimates. Um, make sure that you sign that attestation statement on the invoices or we'll have to return the invoice and ask you to resubmit. Uh, the invoices can be submitted monthly or quarterly, but we do, if you decide you only want to go for quarterly invoicing, we do need them to coordinate, the, the months need to coordinate with your performance report. Because when we do the performance report reviews, we look at the invoiced costs for the same months that the performance report covers. We did has, have a subrecipient um, last round that was invoicing every other month. So things would be a little out of sync with the performance reports. So, um, you know, if it's easier for you to do quarterly than monthly, that's fine. We just want to make sure that you do the same months as the performance reports. As I mentioned, you need to have your records. You need to save your records in case of uh, future audits. Um, money, this bullet here about money on food for approved trainings, it, it, it's hard to explain exactly what the federal policy is, but basically the federal government doesn't pay for food. However, if you have an event that is a, um, like a conference, something where there's technical information being conveyed or a training or something like that, Food is allowed. That should have been spelled out in your budget. Um, right now, nobody's allowed to do in-person trainings anyway, so it's kind of moot. But when we get into the post-COVID era, if you have any questions, please let us know because we don't want to have to disallow costs on food after you've already spent the money. And then, as we just said, no in-person events can be reimbursed until further notice because of the state's COVID policy. And I just want to jump in with one thing. So the grant um, didn't start until November 1st, which is the second month of the quarter. So this first quarter is only going to be two months and then it'll get back onto a regular three month quarter starting in January. So now we're gonna talk about smart sheets. Emily asked about smart sheets. We will talk about smart sheets. So we use the smart sheet software to, essentially it's a grants management software. It allows us on our back end to share documents, track things, keep notes, all kinds of great stuff. You don't need a license to upload documents into Smartsheet. It, it enables us to send you a link and then you can upload the required documents. So all your invoices, reports, and any related documents will be submitted through the subrecipient upload portal. The system automatically sends you an upload link each month before your submissions are due. And then here's one of the clinkers because we can't change this. It's the way the software is designed but only one individual per organization can be designated to receive that report reminder and upload link. So we know that in some larger organizations, you might have one person who's submitting the invoice and a different person who's submitting your performance report. We just ask that you choose the person who's going to be the recipient of these upload reminders, and then they can forward it internally to whoever it is that needs it to upload it. So the person we send it to is not the person that has to upload it to. Right now, oh. this I'm sorry, somebody asked. Alice, uh, it's my question, Marianne, uh, w about how far in advance of the due date for the reporting does that link go out? I'm going to get there in a minute. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, right now, the single point of contact that you identified on your grant application is the one who's going to receive the smart sheet reminders. If you would like us to substitute somebody else for the emails, just let us know. That doesn't change your single point of contact. So, we have, there are two fields in the database, basically one for the single point of contact for official, you know, grant communications that maybe Melanie and Marianne have to send out, but you can designate a second different person to get your smart sheet reminders. But until you tell us the single point of contact is going to be the person that gets those. So next slide, please. So 
the upload portal test. Your single point of contact identified person should have gotten an upload portal test email at 2 p.m. today, so 11 minutes ago. Uh, you can use this email to, one, confirm that you're receiving the Smartsheet reminders. If the reminder went into the junk email folder, we ask that you please mark it as not junk so any future reminders will show up in the inbox. You can also use it to do a test upload. You can upload any document you like. Uh, with our last round of subrecipients, a lot of people just submitted uh, a piece of letterhead. Uh, when I did my first test, I actually uploaded some dehumidifier instructions because that was what I had on my desktop and I was just like uploading a random document. We really don't care what you upload. Um, when you do the upload, uh, a notification will come to us on the back end and then we can send you an email confirming that your upload came through just fine. And we didn't have any problems last time. Everybody was able to do it. If you are our repeat subrecipient and you don't want to do the test upload because you know how to use Smartsheet and everything's always worked fine, you don't need to do the test again. But we went ahead and sent the link to everybody just, you know, just to make sure everything was set up correctly on our end. So, um, if, uh, so I just put the little screen capture there of what it would look like if it came with your Outlook. You know, so it looks like this little thing that says via Smartsheet. It'll probably have my name on it. Um, next slide, please. So what you'll get, the, the document on the left is what the email looks like. It has some you know, paragraph explaining what you're getting. And then there's a button that says open update form. This is another thing we can't change. Once you click on that link, it doesn't work again. Smartsheet is just fussy that way. It, things work once for uploads and they don't work a second time. If you click on the link and then realize you weren't ready to upload and the link's not gonna work again, just email me or Jackie, we'll send you a new link, it's okay. Um, so then once you click on the link, you get the thing on the right there, which is the reminder. It'll have your sub award number, your sub, your, the name of your organization, and then there's a button where you can upload files. Then you upload your invoice and any documentation or your performance report, click submit update, and it shows up on our end if everything goes right. So it's actually pretty easy. The biggest problem we had last time was people not marking the Smartsheet reminders as not junk. And so they weren't seeing the reminders. The invoice reminders are gonna go out on the first of the month, which is a change from last time. Last time we sent them out a little earlier, we're now sending them out on the first of the month or the first business day after the first of the month. And performance report reminders go out on the fifth of the month. And those are so, because the invoices we like, invoices are due by the 12th, the sooner you send them in the better. Performance reports will be due on the 15th each quarter. Frank says he did not get an email. Um, Alice, I'm not sure if I'm set as a single point of contact on that one or not. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's possible, Frank. Ashley said she didn't get hers either. All right, Smartsheet's letting me down. Oh no, everybody's telling me they didn't get their test email. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go check and see what happened while, while Jackie answers other questions. Um, um, yeah, we're, we have a little time for questions, but since this is the first time that we have all grantees on, Jackie, can you lead us through just everybody kind of saying hi and saying who they are and um, their organization? Sure. I should probably get my screen up. Do you want to stop sharing so I can see everybody? There we go. Okay, um, well, we've introduced ourselves. Can, can people just kind of jump in and introduce yourself and just say a couple words about um, the project that you're doing? And then hand it off to another person so that there's none of those awkward silences. <laughs> so I'll, I'm gonna tag Frank first because he's the next one on my grid. <laughs> Good enough. Um, Frank Nobile, a director at the Springfield Restorative Justice. <clears throat> we are working with the school to help develop manuals for their restorative processes in school. And I will go on to pick uh, uh, Melanie. Did you introduce yourself? I don't remember. I did. So if it's okay, Frank, I'll I'll turf the uh, invite to Lindsay because she looks next on my grid. Good to see you. Hi, I'm uh, Lindsay. I'm the assistant director at Valley Court Diversion Programs. You're used to dealing with Ellen, I think. Um, sh we are using this for evidence-based education supports for the youth um, that we work with as far, mostly substance related, but some other things as well. And do you hand it off, Lindsay, too? 
I cannot follow directions today. Uh, <laughs> how about um, M? Thanks, Liz. Sorry. Woo. Yikes. Um, hi, I'm Emily Zanlioni. I am the executive director of the Hartford Community Coalition. And uh, we are working with Hartford High School to purchase um, an evidence-based online education preventative tool called eCheckup. Um, so uh, we're going to purchase um, uh, tobacco, alcohol, and cannabis and kind of pilot it here and see if um, some other folks want to do it next. Uh, oh, uh, Astrid, you're next on my list. Thanks. Hi, I'm Astrid Bradish White of the Turning Point Recovery Center of Springfield. And I am sort of moving into the program lead position that Will, my, my coworker, had formerly been filling in. <laughs> So he's going to be guiding me through the next phase of our program. We, our sub award is around uh, youth-based recovery supports, uh, recovery inclusive community events, and recovery ready workforce training. And we're humming along. We're really grateful to be a part of this and serve folks in recovery. I'll tag Will. Hey, I'm here to help Astrid. I helped coordinate the grant for the first year, uh, went really well, and Astrid um, was very active in leadership and administration of that. Um, and she's actually leading the recovery ready workforce piece of it, because um, we had some staff changes. And uh, I'm just here to help her make sure she gets up to speed. And then I'm going to step back and Astrid's taking over. So really great to be a part of this. Thanks. And I will tag Russell. Hi, I'm Russell Bradbury Carlin, the Executive Director of Youth Services down in the Brattleboro and Bellows Falls area. And we're using this funding to help fund some work with an after school program for teens that we have called Friends for Change. It's a youth led after school program and doing some substance, uh, substance use intervention work in the community. And oh, yeah. Take instructions. Let's see. Who hasn't gone? Uh, Ashleen? No, I don't think you went. Thanks. Uh, so my name is Ashleen Buchanan. I work at Little Rivers Healthcare. We're located in Bradford, Wells River, and East Corinth, Vermont. So that's kind of Central East. Um, sorry about my camera, but um, and I hope you can hear me okay. The service has been a little bit choppy. Good. So uh, we are actually, this is going to be our second year participating with PNG, and we are really excited because we're going to um, officially establish a coalition in our region. And our mission as a coalition is to help teens know that they matter to people in their community. Sorry. Okay. Um... Why don't we jump to Shannon? Hi, I am Shannon Lyford. Um, I work for the DREAM program. And um, this is our first year with this grant and it is going to support um, what we call our village mentoring model, um, which is a mix of both traditional one-on-one -on -one as well as team mentoring. And we're trying to do that in a virtual space right now. Um, but it is supporting um, low income housing communities um, and families and youth in those low income housing communities in Windsor, um, as well as piloting a, a newer program um, with black mentees um, being supported by black mentors um, and some other prevention programming as well. So we're really excited to be part of this grant. Um, and I will pass to Linda, I don't believe you've gone. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Linda Lontane Magoon. I'm the Chief Financial Officer with Thetford Academy. So I'll mostly be involved on the financial end of it. So Jackie, it looks so I may be in contact with you. Um, our project is also like many of you have already said, really around evidence-based um, educational supports. And we're also doing this in partnership with an organization called Up For Learning. And that's our project this year. Okay, Gina. Hi, I am Gina Rock and I'm the Interim Director of Instructional Support Services at Windsor Central Supervisory Union. 
Um, so I'm new into this position and I'm in charge of all of our grants management. So sometimes I'm not exactly sure, like I know all the different grants we're working on, um, but I don't necessarily have them all clear in my head unless I have everything in front of me sometimes. And I'm also in charge of all special education in our district. Um, we are working on, um, we have established a racial justice coalition and we have um, five different components that we're targeting from a student social justice uh, group to um, partnering with uh, uh, different organizations, including uh, some law students helping us to write new policy related to um, racial um, justice and inherent biases. Um, so we have a whole component where we're looking at um, training and working with staff and teachers around this, as well as the student components. There's several different groups that um, we're targeting. Um, and then we also are working on a library of resources. Okay, we had one other person that was just a phone number and that person seems to have disappeared. So I think um, everybody has introduced themselves. Um, Alice, are, are you, and thank you everyone for doing that. That was interesting for me because I jumped in kind of three quarters of the way through the year last year and really had no idea what I was <laughs> managing. Who you were talking to, yeah. <laughs> right. didn't know who I was talking to, didn't really understand the projects. So hopefully this year um, being involved from the start, um, we'll develop relationships and I will be better uh, able to understand what I'm looking at. Um, Alice, I just, are you back? Or I, Marianne, can I just jump in, Jackie? Um, I hope we get, so the person who was on is Anna Martin from Orange County Sheriff's Office. And they're a sub grantee who is um, hopefully uh, when COVID calms down a little bit, uh, do some of the lead law enforcement against drugs training uh, or implementation of that uh, too good for drugs curriculum in the schools in Orange County. So they were a sub grantee last year under the direction of a different officer. They have a new person taking that program on. Um, I'm not sure the, the details of her having to jump off, but wanted you all to know that they were our 10th uh, grantee. Great, thank you. Okay, Alice, are you back? Yes, so I went and I poked around and poked around and found some weird permission setting because I went and looked in my email and I got the test upload thing as I'm, I'm in there as test subrecipient. So I'm like, why did I get it? Nobody else did, but I've reset it now for three o'clock. So at three o'clock, everybody who's listed at the single point of contact should get the email. Like for instance, Linda at Thefford Academy, I think it's actually Kara now. It was originally set up as Patty and they told me to change it to Kara. So so Linda, you won't get it. And then I think um, Lindsay also, you won't get it because it's set up as Ellen. Um, but I think everybody else who's on here is listed as the single point of contact. So if you don't get the Smartsheet upload portal test email at three o'clock today, let me know. Here, I thought I was going to be so slick because I was going to do it during the training and everybody's going to be able to go look and say, yeah, I got it. And anyway, that didn't work. Oh, well, <laughs> sorry. Well, I, I will say that um, Smartsheet um, is a program that um, we've been using now for a couple of years at the collaborative. Um, we have one person on our staff who went for the training and that is, was not me. Um, and her name is also Alice. And then um, Alice Stewart at Mount Escutney, um, she is a smart cheat um, whiz in my book. So um, any smart cheat questions should really get directed to her. Um, I did want to ask for those of you who are repeat subrecipients, do you have any, you know, lessons learned, things to share with um, the new uh, subrecipients about your experience with Smartsheet? Any, you know, helpful hints for uploads or anything? I'm still, I, I uh, think I'm just finally now getting the hang of Smartsheets. And one of the things for me that I get was confusing and it's just just this little pragmatic thing it's silly so like all of the programs you know they're in your google drive you're right here well I, I that you have to look in the email every time for it so i it was confusing to me because i ha i work with a lot of different programs and financial based so uh i just bookmarked it you know how simple was that 
And then um, I was having a problem scanning things to it. So I've been testing that over the last couple of days and Jackie seems to be getting them. So hopefully going forward, it will work better. But um, I, I, it was the bane of my existence for a while. And I, I don't know why, to be honest with you, but it was so. <laughs> I got a couple of lessons learned. Um, I found out that it's really helpful to get all your documents together, especially when it comes to like, uh, quarterly reporting where they want to see any materials that you've produced, like if you put together flyers or PSAs or anything like that, um, or training materials, they want all that included. And it's a little tricky to try to chase that down once you've already opened the link, because like Alice said, you can only open the link once. So it's good to have all those materials downloaded and ready to go and in an easy to find place and upload them all at once. And then I don't actually close the link after I've uploaded them so I can go back and double check and make sure that I got everything and then it's not too late so you can kind of keep that window open for a little while um yeah and like Alice said we can always resend you the link if you mess up and close it too soon so but you will not be the first person who sends us an email saying oops, I attached the wrong version of my performance report, or oops, I sent you last month's invoice, not this month's invoice. Oops is totally okay. And regarding gathering materials for submission, like that's sort of a grant management trick in general. So you might want to just make a habit of putting like quarter one folder of materials together and and then saving it for future with with all my grants that's that tends to look like what it looks like on my desktop i would add a practical trick um because sometimes the uh, upload reminder from smartsheet will come into your email and if you're not going to get to it for five days you might have 350 emails on top of that so you can set up a smart sheet folder in your um, mailbox and right when you get that smart sheet reminder, you could click and drag it or, or send it to that folder. So then when you do have, you know, come to the time to do your reporting, you could click on your smart sheet folder and then it will be there. So that saves time from sorting it through email as well. And any attachments that you, let's say you're sending something to somebody else and you know it's a flyer you're going to include in your report, you could send it to that folder as well. And that's another way to keep track of your attachments through your um, email program. Other questions or lessons learned? I just wanted to give a shout out uh, to everyone who's who's having a second uh, year of funding. It's been our experience working with those of you in the first cohort uh, that has allowed us to be uh, sophisticated enough to present this information to you in a webinar today. We've been learning along with you. Prior to this grant, we were not in the business of subgranting this amount of money in this in this way. So uh, thank you for being our guinea pigs and for um, you know just allowing us that opportunity because we are. I think Alice already mentioned or Marion that we've been sort of growing along with you. So thank you for that. We want to remind you that you'll be hearing about training dates for results based accountability with Angie LeDuc soon, um, hopefully in December. So stay tuned for that to mark your calendars. And if you need to find documents, and since Jackie just edited the invoice in real time with us on the line, wait a little bit before you uh, download that template on this website. You can go for resources, information, contact information at this website here. And this is Alice. I just want to underscore our the web folks did put the previous version of the invoice template up there fairly quickly, but we're in the middle of revising that page right now. So maybe we'll just send out an email telling everybody when it's, you know, when it's ready a little bit, because it's a little harder to follow right now because it's in a transition phase from the application stage to this uh, grants implementation stage. Great. Thank you for that.
I will, um, I will probably, uh, Jackie, if you could resend me the invoice template from that cor uh, correction in the formula you just made, yep. and I will try to get the, um, they're very responsive. I'll try to get the web updated today so you could, it'll be ready as soon as tomorrow. That sounds good. I will do that. And then in the spirit of evaluation, which is one of our um, learning pieces that we try to build the capacity for in this uh, prevention networking opportunity for everyone, including ourselves, please post in the chat one thing that you learned today during the presentation. All right, the smart sheets is coming up. Thanks everybody for exercising your typing fingers and getting some things in the chat. More about the invoices. Ah, the quarterly folders, yes. Calculating the uh, indirect percentage is what I'm imagining or the other percentages, smart sheet education and uh, Excel and smart sheets, hiding the columns. Thanks everybody. So good, that proves to us that at least this time was worthwhile, hopefully for all of you. And definitely I think for on the back end for when we start to receive things, um, we, we won't be so scattered uh, about the invoices and, and things like that, because now we have these systems in place and we really appreciate um, that and your attention and your time. Last thoughts, Jackie and Alice? No, but I love that we now have an additional attendee um, with Will. Oh, I have it, I can't see. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, I, now I'm so curious. <laughs> Usually, oh, at hi. Staff. I always wave at the kids. Right. All right. Our staff meetings, we usually have dogs. So, um. right. <laughs> um, for the RBA training, is can I have all my employees attend? Yeah, um, I think so. I, I did let. Um, if you if you are an old grantee and you have new staff, I did let Angie know that for for what cohort she puts people in purposes. So, yes. Yeah, the intent is to build skill. So let us know if you have, you know, somebody else that you'd like to, to have in, in that thing. Alice, anything else from you? No, just underscoring, repeating what I said before, that we are here to help everyone be successful. So don't be shy to reach out if you have a question. Yes. Thanks, everyone, very much. Have a great day. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Jackie. Yes. Can you save the chat on your, oh, now I see it. I'm saving the chat on my end. Okay. And you're going to save the recording.